And today I want to show you how to create this type of rock formations really, really easily. So basically, what you see over here, all those rocks, like like this main piece over here, didn't took me like took me maybe like 30 minutes to create uh, at most to, to to model, sculpt, and texture. And I want to show you like the process of that because it's really easy. Uh, so yeah, let's create a new cube and go into edit mode, move it up a little bit, just like this, so it, the origin point sits at the bottom. And now it's time to kind of decide how big we want this um, this rock to be for us, right? So, you know, looking at my reference image, which is basically my own artwork, uh, this needs to be fairly big. So I'm going to, you know, size it up, maybe like this, so six meters. Uh, wide I'm gonna make it 15 meters tall because it needs to be really really tall uh, because that was the whole point and now I need to go into like the side view and make this a lot thinner so instead of what six meters let's make it like one meter and yeah basically this is the bounding box of our rock that we are going to create our ancient magic rock so next what I want to do is uh, polish this base a little bit so what we need is to kind of bevel uh, one of those sides because i want it i want this profile of the rock to be sort of like maybe like this um you know so it kind of like flows downwards it's not like a box so what i'm going to do select this uh edge over here and i'm going to press ctrl b in order to bevel this you know and i'm going to add you know, basically a bunch of loop cuts to make everything uh, smooth. So I'm fine with that. So I'm going to go with it. Uh, I'm going to shade smooth and now it's going to look weird. But if you go down here to object data properties and go to the normals and select auto smooth, everything's going to look normal again. Now, what I want to do is take care of that indent uh, in, in, in my rock. So uh, in order to use the booleans operation, we need another object that's, you know, going to reference for the boolean. So for that, I'm going to go into um, Shift A and add a round cube. And I'm going to go down here. And instead of the normal preset, I'm going to choose the quad sphere. So it's basically a cube with subdivisions. Uh, I'm going to press Ctrl 2 uh, while I have this selected. And that's going to add a subdivision uh which is you know two levels of subdivision on this guy over here okay so i'm gonna make this a little bit bigger you know maybe maybe like this i don't know uh you, there's no like real measurements in here i'm basically just doing everything from my eye and uh, you know i encourage you to do the same so i'm going to shade smooth this uh, this guy uh, like this and what do we need we need some um, some displacement on this uh, on this geometry because right now it's like a perfect sphere so what i'm going to do is add another uh, modifier a displace modifier i'm going to s create a new texture and change the coordinates from local to global and i'm going to uh, that's going to make sense in a minute so i'm going to press on this over here with uh, this little icon show texture in texture tab and in here i'm going to change the type from image to clouds and that's going to, you know, apply this uh, like noise texture on top of our uh, model. Now I need to increase the size by quite a lot because you can see all those spikes are really, really small, and I don't want that. I want this to be kind of bubbly, but not um, sharp like this. So I'm going to increase the size to maybe like four. Uh, yeah, something like this. I'm going to apply the rotation. Um, you know, maybe I make it smaller, like three, I don't know, or maybe like four, but actually increase the strength. Like, yeah, maybe like this, that's fine. And the reason I switched the coordinates to global is now whenever you move this guy, so press G, you can see the, like the displacement kind of uh, warps uh, a little bit. And I like this because it's kind of easier for us to find a, an interesting pattern to work with, basically. Okay, so I've got this guy in here, which is my, uh, it's going to be my cutout object. And uh, now what's left to do is basically, you know, put it in place and decide how much we want to 
cut out of this rock that we have something like this it's pretty fine i'm not gonna overthink it that much and i uh and i i would recommend you do not overthink it too much as well so you know i'm going to select my uh my what should be a rock <laughs> so i'm going to select my cube and i'm gonna go into the modifiers and add a boolean set to difference and i'm going to pick up this uh, little eyedropper and select my object round cube and now if I hide this guy we can see we cut out a huge chunk out of our um, out of our, our rock basically uh, if you're happy with your with your stuff <laughs> you know you can basically move this guy if you're not happy with um, your cut or something but uh, you know let's let's assume you're happy with it you can move it up and down if you want uh, I'm just gonna select my uh, my my cube, my rock, and I'm going to hit Control A over this modifier to apply it. And now, you know, it's it's in here. Um, I'm gonna unhide this guy and uh, delete it because I don't need it anymore. And they, it, it's done his job. But now, if I go into edit mode, we can see the topology is pretty bad, and we cannot really work with what we have at the moment. Um, you know, we have a bunch of uh, geometry in here, which which is fine but then we have like those places who that are just plain and um, yeah the, the topology is bad we are not going to be able to do much with what we have right now so what i want to do you know a quick way to to fix the topology on this is to remesh it and there is a um, you know a built-in method so if you go down here again uh, we where we did the normals thing there's another tab that's called remesh and we are going to use the voxel model and basically all you have to do is you know play with this voxel size in here so the lower the number the the higher the density of geometry you're gonna get on the model and i'm going to switch this from 0.1 to 0.02 and hit voxel remesh i'm gonna wait for a couple of seconds for it to load up okay it's done its thing and now you know uh, if I go into edit mode, you can see that we basically have a lot of geometry, but everything is made out of quads. They are square, and you know the the uh, um, like the density of geometry is the same everywhere, and that's fine. And that's fine because the next step is to apply a displacement on uh, on top of this, and that's why we want it uh, equal density of geometry across the entire model so i'm going to apply the rotation and scale just to make sure and what i want to do now is apply a displacement map on top of this to basically um do pretty much a lot of the work for us <laughs> you know so for this i'm going to use the bridge so the quixel bridge and basically i downloaded this rippled lava rock from here uh, and I did it because it has all those intricacies and flows and I really enjoy that and it kind of looks you know like it, it, it works with the theme that uh, that we have which is this uh, magical ancient weird stuff okay so what I'm going to do is uh, right click on this go to files and it's gonna bring me to those downloaded files and basically I'm just gonna copy the path that's all I need and now go onto my rock over here I'm going to go into the modifiers and add a displacement modifier but before i do that let me turn it off a little bit you know actually let me delete it so what do we want to do right now uh, basically we need to uv unwrap this this whole thing uh, because we want to apply the the displacement based on the uvs okay so the easiest way to do that and you know like the easiest and the fastest way is to go into edit mode select everything press u and go with smart uv project okay so just press ok wait for a couple of seconds and now you have uvs great uh, now we can go into the modifiers and do a displace uh, new texture coordinates use the uvs which we have just created and now go right over here again into the texture and we can um, add so just you know press open you know cop paste your uh, the, the path you just uh, copied from that directory where you downloaded textures and right over there you are going to have two displacements 
uh, maps in here. Just pick the one that has the EXR format. Just open that up. And straight away we get all those intricacies. Basically we get the texture, our height map, our um, displacement on top of it. I'm going to turn off the half float precision because I want to use like the full precision of it basically. Uh, color space change that to non-color. I'm going to turn off the alpha because there's no alpha in this texture. And um, next thing I want to do is basically kind of like decrease the size of it. Uh, I want to make this texture be uh, like spread larger onto our asset. So for that I'm going to go into our UV editing tab and I'm going to select all our UVs, press S, then 0.5 to um, to make them twice as small. Now what you want to do, basically, so, um, you know, because we use the displacements, we have a bunch of artifacts, like bad stuff happening around here. And uh, yeah, we are going to fix all of this through, through a little bit of sculpting uh, really, really soon. Okay, so now, uh, if you're happy with your displacement, you can just apply it, uh, just like this. Just press Ctrl A over that modifier, and um, yeah, we can go into the sculpting tab. And all we will do over here is basically we are going to smooth out the the edges, and um, we are going to fix all the all this rubbish happening. Um, basically, the reason why you get this is because displacements don't work really well when you have like uh, really sharp edges. So basically whenever you have like a 90 degree angle on an object, you um, there's bound to be weird things happening just because. So, um, you know, the the fast way to fix this is just going to the sculpting. Doesn't really matter which one of those you're going to have because you're basically going to uh, keep shift pressed and just go around all those uh, edges like this. All right, so we have our main uh, rock right now, but we still have some stuff to do uh, before we get into texturing. Okay, so what I want to do is copy it right now, and I want to put this guy into another uh, collection by pressing M, and I'm going to call this backup. Okay, I'm going to turn off that whole collection, and now we have a backup in, ca in case we do some stupid shit along the way. Okay, now, what we need to do is to optimize this guy. Uh, and we need to optimize it because, first of all, it, this whole single rock is like 1 million polygons and there's really no reason for it to be this high poly. That's one. Secondly, there is no way in hell we can UV unwrap uh, this thing in a nice and proper way with all <laughs> this geometry. Actually, you know, you know, of course, there's a way, but uh, uh, it's not it's not what we want to do uh, today. So what I want to do is I'm going to remesh this guy and retopologize it uh, once again and get like a low poly version of it. Now, for this step, I myself am using a paid add-on which is called uh, Quad Remesher, basically. Um, you can use the the remesh, uh, the built-in remesh down here that we've used uh, on a previous step as well. You can do that, but it's not nearly as good as uh, this add-on is. And uh, you know, if you want to know how I do stuff, then this is how I do stuff basically. So I'm gonna just keep those settings uh, as they are, and I'm gonna click remesh it. And this program is just gonna do its thing, and it's going to retopologize this. And it's going to remesh it into a nice low poly version that we can basically then uh, work really really fine with. We can UV it properly and then we can send it over to texturing and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's also going to be you know like a low poly and it's not going to be so 
uh, so hard on our computer when we render, render it out. So, you know, right here it says like remeshing process right now is 75%. It's done. Uh, we don't care one bit about it anymore. And now we have, you know, like a 40,000 uh, polygon rock. And now this is a lot um, easier to work with. If I go into edit mode, you can basically just see <laughs> the the triangles and everything's fine. And this is nice. We can work with this one really, really fine. Okay, now what do we need to do? We need to... Okay, so now what we need to do is basically UV unwrap this guy. And we are going to UV unwrap it not with um, you know the smart UV project because we want to make sure that this whole face is one single uh, island basically. So I know for a fact that my camera is going to be something like this when I render this out. So that means that this whole front face is the most important part and it's the part that I want to make sure it's uh, uh, it's like a one size island and we don't have any seams going on on this side which might be visible or not so for that I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm going to add manual seams so the way I'm going to do it is go to one of the one of those uh, corners of the uh, of, of my rock and before I go any further I want to kind of like explain the concept of how I'm going to UV unwrap this guy so our rock is basically a cube on steroids right it's a cube with <laughs> with a bunch of stuff but essentially it's just a cube okay so it's basically it's this okay this is our rock it's just a cube with you know more shapes and forms here and there but it's essentially a cube the way you uv unwrap this guy is by you know taking one of the faces and fully uh, uh fully uh, like seam it like this and then go on the edges like this and add a seam and now if you UV unwrap this guy. This is like basically the the most the most um, default way of uh, of UV unwrapping a cube. And essentially, you can also do this sort of thing um, to it, and you're gonna have perfect UVs. So we are going to apply this concept over to our more unique cube here on the left. So basically. We are going to go around the edges like this and UV and make a seam over there. Then we are going to do the same thing on this side. Follow the edges like this. And then finally we are going to add this those edge um, those side seams. So basically here and here. And I don't know, maybe here or not. So that's kind of like the, the theory, the concept of how we are going to approach this. Now I'm going to go into edit mode and basically just do that. The easiest way to do it is to go in one of the corners and find one of those points where three edges come to a kind of like a full stop. And you can use this as a reference for you uh, to where the corners are. So. I'm going to start with one of those edges, right? So I'm going to click on one of those and then I'm going to go, you know, like follow the rhythm and whenever I want to, uh, so basically I want to, I want it, I want this guy to follow my, uh, my mouse. So I click on control and left click over here. And this guy is going to find the shortest path to this place. That's that's pretty much the um, the concept of what we are doing right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna go down like this, Control E, Mark Scene, and then I'm just gonna continue going down some more like this, and then go and find another corner like we have uh, up. So you know I'm gonna come all the way down here, and this is one of the scenes. Okay, so I continue from where I'm from where I left. So from here, I'm gonna go 
and do a cut until here and from this side I'm gonna go up like this If I go into material preview you cannot see the texture on top of it because there is no UV so just go um, select everything press U and just do unwrap and now you can see we have UVs and mainly the like the most important part is that this face we have uh, you know facing our camera is like one full island with no seams on top of it and you can see the, the UVs are fine, there's no stretches, there's nothing going on. So if I go into UV editing you can see that we have, uh, we've got, uh, we've got two islands, so one and another one with, with, which are basically the front and the back face and then we have the, the sides, which we don't really care about. This is what we, this is basically what we wanted to achieve to have those faces be like full islands with no you know ripped parts and whatever so now we have uvs and we have pretty much all we need all we need to start texturing this guy And you know you can go into render view with an HDRI and you get your final result basically. So you've got your cool looking ancient rock with um, the whole of those letters and textures and text you know and it and it's really high quality like you can go pretty much close to it and it kind of holds up like the, the texture looks good <laughs> and the lighting falls really really nicely on top of it and it's a yeah it's a it's a great asset it's a great asset to have 